This video will walk through the process to set up Azure Data Factory pipelines that can resume and pause Azure Synapse dedicated SQL pools. My name is Greg Beaumont and I am a Cloud Solution Architect for Microsoft. This video is my own and is not officially endorsed by my employer. This video is related to another video that shows how to trigger these pipelines from Microsoft Teams and Power Automate. I've linked that video below if you are interested, but this video might still help even if you are not using Teams and Power Automate to trigger the pipelines. There are six simple steps to set Azure Data Factory pipelines to resume and pause Azure Synapse dedicated SQL pools. First, you can add them to an existing data factory or you can create a new one. I created a new one since there will be some permissions assigned related to other tools. I ended up with this simple method using a reference article that I included in the link below. The article had some additional complexities that I didn't need for a simple on and off set of pipelines. Once you have a data factory, ensure that Power Apps and Flow can access that data factory. So here you can see I've created a data factory called Pause Resume Synapse. And one of the options is for access control. And from here you can grant access to this resource. And after granting access, you can then see the resources that have access. And in this case, you'll see that Power Apps and Flow was added as a contributor for this data factory. Next, if you open Azure Data Factory Studio and go to the authoring section, you can see I have two pipelines here, one for pause synapse and one for resume synapse. Let's start with resume synapse. Under pipelines, you could create a new pipeline. Then once this pipeline is here, add a new activity for web. And within that activity, you can give it a user-friendly name, and then under settings, you can add a URL. So this is the important part. This is the API that is going to send a command to resume Synapse. And you wanna have it in post mode. And let's review what the URL is to make that call and what you need to put in there. So I've included a link to a page where you can get the official uh, information about the API. For the example that I'm giving, my API URL looks something like this. And I've highlighted the different parts that you're going to want to customize. All of those A's will be your subscription ID. Next is the resource group. Then the name of the Synapse workspace, the name of the SQL pool that you want to pause or resume, and then whether or not you want to resume or pause it. In this case, we're gonna be resuming. If you change the word resume to pause, you can use the exact same string to pause Synapse. So again, breaking down that API, there's the prefix, add your subscription ID, add your resource group name, add your Synapse workspace name, add the SQL pool name, and then whether or not you want to resume or pause. There's also some different versions of the API, and at the time that I'm making this video, the version for 2021-0601 worked perfectly fine for me. So let's review a few of those things. Your subscription ID is something that you can find in Azure. I'm not gonna show that in the video. The resource group name is the name of the resource group where you have that data factory, and in my case, I also have that Synapse workspace. Probably a good idea to put them in the same resource group just for management purposes. Next, the Synapse workspace name, which is right up here. And this is the Synapse workspace that brings together all the different tools within Synapse. Then you'll also see that we have the dedicated SQL pool. And if I go ahead and click on that, you have the name of the dedicated SQL pool. In my case, SQL pool one. And then finally, just if you want to resume or pause the Synapse instance. Now, moving back to that Resume Synapse pipeline, you can see we have that URL entered here at the top. It's a post. You have to put something in the body, so I just added Resume Synapse. Then for authentication, select Managed Identity and use this URL, https management.azure.com. That's it. Then rinse, wash, repeat, create a separate pipeline to pause Synapse that's effectively identical. Now, one last step within the Synapse workspace, you also need to give permission to the data factory to access the Synapse workspace. And this is one of the reasons I created a separate data factory because you have Power Automate connecting to that data factory and then the data factory is connecting to Synapse. And uh, from a permissions perspective, I just thought it would be a good idea to keep it separate. Click on access control. And under the role assignments, you'll see that pause and resume Synapse which is the data factory that I created for these pipelines, has contributor permissions to this Synapse workspace. And if you'd like to test the pipeline after you're done, you can go ahead and trigger it and see if it works. 
In this case, you'll see that it's running. And you can also see that the dedicated SQL pool is resuming. Once again, I'm using these pipelines to resume and pause Synapse dedicated SQL pools from Microsoft Teams and Power Automate in a way that prevents Synapse from accidentally getting left on. There's a separate video linked in the description below if you want to check out how that works so that you can give your business users a way to turn Synapse on without taking the risk that they're going to leave it on and run up a bigger bill. A link to that video is in the description below.